So I've been playing Dragon Ball Evolution. Hey! Hey, Goku! Get over here, Goku! Yeah, th there we go, Goku. Say, Goku, do you remember that sub-series I was doing? Where I was going around reviewing weird, obscure, and not great fighting games? Well, guess what, Goku? Today, I'm gonna talk about one of your games. No, 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 shh, 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 no, no, shh, it's fine. It, it's fine, I, I didn't mean Final Bout. That, that, that one isn't good by any means, but, but I dig it. You're, you're good, man, D don't worry. I wanted to talk about Dragon Ball Evolution, the movie, the game, in which you were portrayed by, uh, some guy, or, uh, PNG of some guy, rather. You see, Goku, no expenses were made for your game this time around. All animation was reserved for the actual gameplay, and by reserved, I mean that they literally took the in-game models and movesets from Dragon Ball Budokai whatever and gave them a new paint job. It does stay true to your little show, though, buddy. I mean, Bulma is there. <laughs> Master Roshi is there too. Uh, p p pick, p Piccolo. <sighs> God damn it! Yeah, so this is a thing that happened. If if you don't know, Dragon Ball Evolution was a movie no one liked, based on a series of anime people like for the most part, and then some parts they just kind of put up with. It, it's complicated. Either way, in the show, when Goku meets Bulma, he slaps her on the pussy. And it saddens me to say that they did not recreate this very scene. Instead, Goku is bullied by some fuckheads, and then he gets really angry and discovers his superpowers, and then a knockoff villain from the 1990s Power Rangers is well angry at the world, and so Goku, having said superpowers, has to do something about this. He does that through very bad visual novel and okay fighting game. I, uh... <laughs> I fucking love this game's Wikipedia page, by the way. Gameplay, same as Budokai series. Plot, same as the movie. Structurally, it is as follows. Panels and text lead into conflict. Playable conflict, more panels, repeat. So basically, just like any other fighting game story, really. Except that this one is kind of funny and lacks all illusions of grandeur. The conflict, in any case, as stated, is fine. You play as one guy fighting the other guy on the opposite end of the screen. There's a total of 11 guys you can fight as. Including a monkey, and all of them play differently from one another, being that they boast decently expansive movelets performed through doing time-based button combos a la Mortal Street Tekken 5. Of course, being the Dragon Ball, they can shoot laser beams from their arms, coming at the expense of key energy represented by these on-screen bars, what you can charge by standing stationary and charging. In essence, it is a game of managing your key good, and having enough foresight as to when to charge and when to offense, with which you're aided by by having the ability to kind of exhaust dudes in a way. Now, that right there, <laughs> that's a fucking scene, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Dragon Ball Evolution was developed by Dips, who, besides making the Sonic handheld games, except for that one JRPG made by fucking BioWare, Bio they also developed the Budokais. And so, as stated, this is a reskin remix grab bag of shit. I suppose I could go through all of the Budokai games and discern which moves and or entire movesets were lifted from where, but uh... No? It's great fun in any case. Piccolo's in-game walk cycle aside, the combat is fast and flashy. Dudes do all that Dragon Ball things where they slide across the ground really, really fast. You know, instead of the awkward sidestep most other fighting games come at you with, and all of the beams and the Kamiya Bombas and shit are all like proper little cutscenes with cool dynamic angles and satisfying 70s kung fu sound effects and sparkly bits. Everyone also has their trademark special moves, of course, like uh, Yamcha ramming you with this fucking jeep, or this... 
person who has a jetpack. All of which making the screen shake and flash with even higher levels of excitement as the epic screen shakes as seen in the visual novel segments. In a weird way, it actually managed to convey the show pretty well. I mean, really, <laughs> all Dragon Ball Z is is just Toriyama slamming his action figures together and screaming a bunch whilst not really thinking of the consequences. And this game is essentially the same, only instead of mashing figurines, you're mashing buttons. Although, perhaps, that said, a big part of the fun of the original Budokai games came from reenacting the shit what you saw on TV after school together with your dipshit friends whilst also screaming a bunch. And seeing as this is a PSP game based on a shitty god-awful movie, you won't be getting a whole lot of mileage out of it past the two-hour runtime that the story mode brings. As, yeah, a lot of the essentials are outright missing. Combo-wise, for one, the game is quite scarce, being that each character only has like three special moves, all of which based upon how much key you have rather than providing any tricky button combinations. And in regards to the generic punchy kicky shit, you also don't get a whole lot more than punch plus down, kick while dashing, dash plus kick while holding up, and so on. Now, while it is true that similar things can be said about the Budokais themselves, they at least had tons of flash to make up for your lack of bang. Which doesn't really fly here, as none of the characters really seem to fly either. Stuff like the beam struggles, or smashing dudes through entire mountain ranges, or Piccolo's trademark finger bang are all absent. Also, uh, the monkey is tiny. Which, correct me if I'm fuck, but wasn't the whole appeal of playing as a giant earth demolishing ape the fact that you were playing as a giant earth demolishing ape? To be fair though, I wouldn't really put this on the devs as they totally did the best with the shitty movie licensed cards that they were dealt with. But hey, that's just a theory again. Dragon Ball Evolution features such exciting scenes as the screen shaking, flashing light, characters sliding away slowly, characters sliding away quickly, and the screen shaking again, but faster. It is riveting in every sense of the word. I was completely absorbed and enveloped in Giko's plight. The random PNGs and stock images used as backgrounds create a very engrossing and tense atmosphere, rivaling that of the show. If there ever was a game that could make even the shittiest streamer or let's player seem like the funniest fucking town, it's Dragon Ball Evolution. My name is Goku. I'm just going to the party. I'm not looking for any trouble. Trouble found you, freak. So turn around and walk away. Oh, oh, oh no, never mind. They're sliding and flashing again. <laughs> There's a couple of frames in this that <laughs> I swear had to have been done by another actor as the actor acting in the movie. Which, considering that they literally follow the exact same plot as said movie, it's rather baffling that they would go through the effort. Effort that doesn't show anywhere else. In fact, I'd say that them including some snaps of their very own somehow actually makes the whole thing even uglier. By far, the best thing though are all of the bizarre ass rewrites, like the Dragon Balls being referred to as the Prometheus, or how all of the key blasts are now dubbed airbending. And of course, there is the whole, my name is Goku, I'm just your average high school student stuff, which is hilarious, bless this mess. In any case, I very much prefer this over the pussy slapping, kitty dicking, booby rubbing origin story of the original Dragon Ball. I uh, also love the facial expression on Goku's in-game model. It's uh, it's very poignant, to say the least. So yeah, this game sucks fucking dick, and don't ever play it. Though, in saying that, if you're ever found in the situation where you're forced to, you might find it to be an okay experience that is quite funny. I get that a lot of this is due to the movie, but Goku being such a bitch-ass fuckhead in this one who gets bullied, which, let's be honest, any teenager with this haircut and this hairline should be, it's bloody great, and I also adore that Master Roshi is just some dude instead of being a potential sex offender. Honestly, this game is leagues ahead of the film in every single way. I might have to rewatch it to be able to say this definitively, though. <laughs> fuck doing that, but the movie doesn't really work as a so bad it's good as it's just so goddamn generic, boring, and offensive, given how it dungs all over the license. The sacred, holy, untouchable Dragon Ball license that totally hadn't been horribly fucked with up to that point 
But <laughs> this game does work as a so bad it's good, as the gameplay actually is just pretty good, and moreover, it elevates the god awful script and presentation to god tier by having all of it play out with these non emoting stills taken out of the film's promo material. Like, typically, when you do the manga panels thing, you A, have them drawn, and B, have more of them to switch between so that you can have the characters express emotions relative to the scene. Yet here, they decided to run with the most bored, disinterested, and downright apathetic snapshots that they could find. This right here is Master Roshi being angry. This right here is Master Roshi telling an epic campfire story. And this is Master Roshi doing the Kamehameha! Such power indeed, Goku. Such power indeed. Better yet is when they finally do choose to show a different frame for Master Roshi, it fucking looks like this. Anyway, the entire game feels like one big, awkward, deadpan joke. Romances are had, lives are threatened, worlds are saved, all the while everyone involved looks like they just woke up and showed up to cash in their check on set. It's fitting, it's great, and Piccolo is totally the wrong shade of green, worst fucking game ever. <laughs>